Okay, in uh, this video, we'll be talking about um, the last and final part of uh, aldol condensation, and we name it aldol condensation part three. Now, um, in part three, what we're going to basically look at, if you remember part one and part two, part one we started with aldol condensation, we tried to find out what aldol condensation is, we talked about um, uh, what aldol reaction is, what aldol condensation is. We talked about um, mechanism. In part two, we talked about uh, examples of uh, self and cross aldol and um, then we also talked about the Claisian Schmidt condensation now in part 3 what we're going to basically look at that is, um, let me bring it on this side. <clears throat> so, in part three, we're going to be looking at um, some more examples, and this time we're going to talk about uh, examples relating to intra molecular aldol. condensation. So let's uh, get back to that <coughs> intramolecular aldol condensation. So what is that is what we need to figure out now. Um, let's take a reaction sequence. I have uh, a methyl cyclohexane, one methyl cyclohexane and uh, I first do ozonolysis, then hydrolysis in the presence of zinc which is known as reductive hydrolysis. So the overall reaction is called reductive ozonolysis and I get some product A and we treat this product with dilute base to get B and we heat this to get C. So we can be right now um, pretty sure that the A to B is aldol reaction and B to C completes the aldol condensation part. Now A, to get the product A, A is pretty simple. You know that in ozonolysis we break the double bond, we break both the bonds completely and on both the carbons we have a double bond O. So this would become a ketone because it has got two alkyl groups. This is, this is going to become an aldehyde because it has caught one hydrogen. And because we are doing reductive ozonosis, the aldehyde remains as the aldehyde. And if you don't use zinc, which we call as oxidative ozonolysis, then the aldehyde would have become the acid. So, um, so the product that we're going to get is going to be ketone here and an aldehyde here. So this is product A. Now, um, so this is product A. Now, when I wanted to go from A to B, now see I've got two carbonyl compounds and both of them happen in the same molecule. So I'm going to get the, the what was mentioned earlier as the intramolecular aldol condensation. So in this, uh, as discussed in part two, 
uh, when we discussed the self and the cross aldol uh, i had mentioned that uh, whenever you have two different carbonyl compounds one is an aldehyde the other is a ketone it is the aldehyde's carbon which will be more electrophilic compared to that of the ketone because of two plus i effects on the ketone that makes the carbon less electrophilic this carbon is less hindered as well as more electrophilic now um therefore what will happen is that uh, the attack will happen on the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde remember the more electrophilic more electrophilic carbon gets attacked so this carbon is going to get attacked now if the alpha now the ketone always has to remember two alpha carbons and therefore two alpha hydrogens here so let's see which one it's going to take if the alpha hydrogen is lost from this methyl carbon then this is going to form a bond with this and that would make it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 membered ring this is going to be a ring molecule seven membered ring whereas if the alpha carbon uh, the alpha carbon this one this alpha carbon attacks then this bond will form and i'll get 1 2 3 4 5 5 membered ring and as we know that in the ring stability case ring stability is always 6 5 4 3 and 7 would be slightly less than 6 and but almost equal to 6 but less than 6 so the ring stability is the best for 6 but the ring formation is is 6 5 3 a uh, 3 because uh, in spite of the being the most strained ring uh, in in forming a three membered ring you'll always find the atoms will be much much closer and so the chances of formation of the ring is definitely more now coming to this one a five member ring is more likely so the alpha hydrogen is lost from this carbon this attacks the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde and this moves up down rather so the compound b is going to be a five membered ring and uh, there is going to be a o negative and i'm assuming it's going to take the proton from water so it becomes oh this becomes the oh so let's number this carbon as 1 i'm just not numbering it randomly 1 2 3 4 and 5 so my one carbon is the oh the second carbon is this one 3 4 5 and if you remember on the second carbon i've got a cooch3 so this is a cooch3 this is b and um, when i go from b to c aldol condensation completes dehydration happens and the double bond will form here so that it is conjugated with this double bond o so i'm going to get um, a five membered ring there'll be a double bond here double bond o ch3 so that is the product c so uh, i started with a six membered ring and i ended up with a five membered ring So basically this is the intramolecular aldol condensation and that too between an aldehyde and a ketone and the attack happens on the aldehyde by the carbonyl carbon uh, by the um, alpha carbon of uh, of the ketone so as an example for you i'll give you one more question which is very similar to this it's going to be much more easier now that you've uh, seen this one but it uh, just needs you to um, you know work on this a little bit uh, i'm going to start with a six membered ring now uh, let me make it uh, let me change the page yeah so uh, let me get this uh, right yes so i'm going to take a five membered ring start with the five membered ring methyl carbon and i do the ozonolysis do the a reductive hydrolysis gives me a same product a oh minus dilute i get b and i heat this 
negative c so try to work this out and um, i'll give you the answer in the next video thanks for watching